Hey guys, today I wanted to talk to you about Bitwarden and the premium account versus the free account and whether or not the $10 a year is worth it to you to upgrade. Uh, so let's get started. Okay guys, probably a question I see all the time about Bitwarden is whether or not it's worth upgrading for $10 a year to the premium account. The free account is great, it's got a lot of great features in it. Uh, some people upgrade just for the sake of supporting such a great platform, um, but if you're new to Bitwarden and you're kinda curious whether or not the premium's there and what those features actually mean, then this is the video for you because we're gonna go over some of those features and then you'll be able to see exactly what they do and whether or not it's worth it, um, or if the free account does what you need it to do and you can just stay on the free account, which is a great account, there's nothing wrong with it. I personally have the enterprise account because I work with a couple of other colleagues that use it it. Um, so we have some of the kind of the sharing features in there, uh, but today I'm mostly just going to be comparing the free account to the premium account. Comparing either the family account or the enterprise account um, will be a different video, uh, but I'm going to touch on some of those topics today. So with that, let's get started. Okay guys, here, so let's just take a quick look at their website and uh, just compare the plans. So we're just comparing the personal plan, specifically the free versus the premium. So we'll go right right down into the details here. So the big thing here, um, I'm just gonna touch on the family just a bit. I know I just said I'm gonna do the premium, but the family one, it's really about sharing uh, your passwords with other users, and they do that with collections. So uh, say my wife and I both had Bitwarden accounts, and um, you know, I have my own passwords, and she has her own passwords, but if there's you know some family accounts, like to the school or something like that that we wanted to share, we would put that into a collection called school or kids or something like that, and then um, we would put uh, that account, share it to that collection, and then anybody that's entitled to that collection would get it. So uh, that's not really what we're talking about today though. We're talking about if you as an individual, um, if the free or the premium you know, makes sense for you. So that's why if you're looking at these users and why these two just say one, it's just because it's not designed to share your passwords with anybody. This is really just about you and the features for you as an individual user. There'll be another video on more details about the family and the business plans. So um, if you're wondering what collections are, that's what um, it, that's what we're talking about when we talk about uh, the shared accounts. That's just to share your passwords. So that's why in these two, in the free or the premium, you don't get them because it's just one user. You're not sharing with anybody. Obviously, you get access to all the Bitwarden account uh, apps on all the account packages. So that's your, you know, Android, iPhone, Windows, Mac, all of them. There's no limitation. You can install it on whatever you want. Um, you get access to store, you know, as many identities, uh, or sorry, items into that system as you want. Uh, so your all your credit cards and usernames and passwords and all that stuff. You can sync across your accounts. Shared items again. That's only available in the family plan. Um, and then the secure password generator. Um, it's available on all of them, but I'm gonna show you uh, a kind of a neat nugget about password generator uh, that I use every single day. It's a pretty, it's a pretty good lifesaver. So um, that's if you're using the free or the premium, you're gonna get that tip today now. Obviously you get a little bit of space with the premium. So if you wanna upload you know, pictures, um, I use this a little bit if I wanna take a copy of um, like maybe like a health card or, or driver's license or something like that, a photo of it and have that in my vault, I can do that as well. And, um, and so having a little bit of space there is great. Um, so that, that alone could be worth the $10 a year. We're not talking a lot of money, right? You can see it's $10 US a year to upgrade. So um, it's a really great platform, but I understand that might not be for everybody. So that's what today's video is about. You still get all the encryption, especially if you want to export. That's a relatively new feature. If you want to export all your vault um, as an encrypted JSON, put that on a USB key and put it in your safe or something. That's a nice new feature. Um, premium features. So this is this is the big one. We're going to talk about this today. Your Bitwarden authentication, your TOTP. This is about logging into other um, systems. So we're going to set up a lab uh, with Twitter. And I'm gonna show you how you can do this, but this essentially allows both your first factor and your second factor to be in Bitwarden. I can already hear the comments blowing up about how insecure that is and da 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 da, da. It's a really, really great feature. It's by far most of the premium people that I've talked to love that feature and we'll talk about that more and when you should consider using it not on a security side of things. So just hold on the comments for a second until we get to there. Um, and then uh, your two-factor login, so you get your basic two-factor login on the free account, you get a little bit more options on the premium account. There is an ability to use the YubiKey on the free account. Uh, I have a video on that, I'll link it below. Um, and if you're new to Bitwarden, I'd recommend checking out that video anyways, because it'll basically walk you through how to make sure your Bitwarden account, your vault is set up really well and really secure. So regardless if you have free or premium, check out that video if you're new to Bitwarden. But <clears throat> Just know that on the uh, the premium side, you get a little bit more uh, features when it comes to um, your two-factor to log into the vault. 
Um, as for some of the other features, so your Volta with your emergency access. Your emergency access is a brand new feature to Bitwarden. It's only a few months old. Obviously, you get support. Uh, both of them are cloud-hosted or self-hosted, so whatever you want. So the biggest thing is your Vault ha um, health report. So that's if your password's been compromised or or anything along that. So I'll show you guys that. The emergency access is, is a nice feature. It's a little, little complicated just because of all the security that's in there. But the emergency access basically is um, if there's somebody that you trust that you would want to give them access to your vault in the event of you being incapacitated or maybe passed away or something like that and you want somebody else to have access to all of that information to be able to run your life or shut down accounts or whatever it is, um, you can grant them emergency access. I'm not gonna cover too much of that today because it's pretty well documented on their site, um, but uh, but that is a nice feature that some people, some people do like. Uh, the vault health, re health reports, I use it all the time to make sure none of my passwords are compromised, so. The big thing I'm gonna to cover today is I'm gonna cover the uh, nugget about the secure password generator, because I, I really love that feature. And I'm gonna cover the Bitwarden Authenticator, the TOTP feature, because this feature alone is often enough to drive people to pay the $10 a year. It certainly is enough for me. And uh, so let's go touch into that right now. Okay guys, so here I'm logged into my pro account and um, let's just start taking a look around. So um, one thing is under the tools, you can see under the reports, you're gonna get this in the pro account. This is your passwords report and stuff like that. Um, so any exposed passwords, you can check for that. So this will check like, check the dark web and all those other things, anything online that your password might have been exposed in some other way, shape or form, it's gonna check that. It's also gonna check to see how often you're reusing your passwords. This is a pretty fresh vault for me. I only have a couple things in here just for our demo. Um, but uh, in my actual one that I use, um, everyone reuses their passwords in some way, shape or form. Uh, but obviously you try not to, right? So this is a really great report to find out how often you're reusing those passwords and then get those to be unique. Um, so that's, I really like the reuse reports one. The exposed password one, you know, there's certain things like in my house or whatever that I haven't changed the default password on. You should, but if I'm doing like labs or whatever, I, I won't. And so often it'll be like, you know, this is an admin password and it's been exposed, you know, 5 million times. Well, yeah, because the password's admin, right? So uh, the exposed password's really good, um, but uh, sometimes you have to kind of go through the noise a little bit to figure out if it's actually a serious password of yours or if it's just something internal or behind a firewall. The weak passwords is good. Again, pretty self-explanatory. Do you have any weak passwords and should you beef them up? Unsecured website. So this is just basically checking, are you logging into any websites using HTTP instead of HTTPS? So you can see that up here, right? Or maybe if you guys don't know, you should be always using HTTPS. That way that um, when you're submitting your password across the internet, it's secured. Um, if you use just HTTP and you submit your password, anybody in the middle of that communication, say on like a Wi-Fi at Starbucks or anything along those lines, they would be able to see um, all your data transmitting. So your password would be, would be able to uh, snatch out of the air relatively easily. So this is just a good one to be making sure you're using HTTPS. Um, inactive uh, two-factor report. So this just makes sure that if a website offers two-factor authentication that you do in fact have that set up. Um, it's not perfect. It has to know that you have TFA set up. Um, and so this may not be the most accurate report, but, but it's good to know. And data breach. So is your web, is your email address been exposed on any data breaches? So, um, that's basically the reports that you get with your premium. Some people find that valuable. Some people don't. For me personally, I think that's a huge value. Um, my mom probably wouldn't care at all, <laughs> but, uh, every once in a while I might jump on her computer and ask her to run these reports and just say, Hey, let's just make sure things are okay. So, um, this is a really good way of getting an idea of how secure your passwords are, how well your vault's doing without having to actually know what all those passwords are. So this is a really great tool. Um, another great tool, and this is the uh, TOTP feature, the second factor authentication. So I'm going to set this up with this Twitter account that I have, this demo Twitter account, and I'm going to show you how you can actually put your second factor into the vault. Now, again, we can talk about pros and cons to doing this. It really depends on what the app is and what you're trying to do. Um, it's still a second factor of authentication, and I'll show you how that works. So if somebody has my username and password, they still will need that second factor to be able to log in. Uh, so if I use my same password for multiple services, um, and my service, you know, my password is breached on one service, and they start just guessing those, that same username and password across other services, um, they would not be able to log in without that second factor. So a couple things there. One, obviously don't reuse, reuse your passwords, but if you do reuse your passwords, um, then the second factor will at least stop that breach from happening. Where you're less secure is if somebody gets a hold of your vault here in Bitwarden, then yeah, they have access 
to it no matter what, right? They'll have your username, your password, and your second factor. So you'll want to consider, you know, if that were to happen, would you care if they got into your Twitter account versus if they got into your bank account, right? Those would be two, those would be your questions that you'd want to ask yourselves. So for me, there are certain features where I would want the convenience of having the second factor in here, and there's other things where I'd want the security to be either um, in my phone, which again, SMS and, and auth apps can be a little tricky on security, or even just put it on a hardware's token like a YubiKey. If you're gonna store two-factor authentications into your vault, make sure your vault is very, very secure. And by that, I mean, make sure you're securing it with a YubiKey or some kind of hardware token. I do cover that in the other video. Again, it's in the comments, um, but make sure you're locking down your vault with a second factor hardware token. Um, and then that way you're not gonna be able to expose your vault to other, other people. So it's really a judgment call, but this feature is really great for those things you wanna have two-factored, but you don't wanna have a major inconvenience for. So let's do it with a Twitter account. So here I'm logged into this Twitter account. This is just a random account. This isn't my actual Twitter. My Twitter handle is at Tristan Bolton. Um, but this is just what we're gonna do for the purposes of this demo. You go into your settings here. Um, security and account, security, and we're gonna set up two-factor authentication. So now we're gonna use a, an authentication app, right? You could use text message, but SMS stuff is getting snatched out of the air. Sim jacking's happening a lot. More viruses are on cell phones. So text messages aren't really my favorite uh, system. Uh, one nice thing also about the TOTP, if you use app authentication, is uh, if you use if you don't use the premium, but if you use a family or an enterprise account, now you'll be able to take that username and password and second factor and start to share with other people. Again, premium is just for you, but if you do family or enterprise accounts, then now that second factor is in that um, in that vault item, and you can now share that with other people in collections. So that's really great. So now they all have second factor without having to need access to your cell phone. Uh, security key keys are the most secure using hardware tokens and stuff like that. That's not what we want. What we want for this account, we just want kind of good middle of the road. Uh, security uh, without compromising too much convenience. So we're going to do an authenticator app. So I'm sure you guys have all done this before um, where you know, I'm just going to copy my password. So here's the Twitter. I just click the key. It'll copy the password, enter it in there. Um, I'm sure you guys have seen this all before. You take the QR code, you take your phone, you scan the QR code, and uh, you add it to your Google Authenticator or Authy or whatever it is you're using. Well, what we're gonna do here is we're gonna say, can't scan QR code. And I've seen that button pretty much any time I've ever wanted to use this feature. So almost all of them will give you the option to do this private key. So you take this text and you copy it and you're gonna put it into your vault. So here's my Twitter item and I'm gonna hit edit the Twitter uh, vault item. And under the TOTP authenticator, I'm gonna paste that private key. So you can see that. So now I'm gonna hit save and now it's gonna generate that one-time authorization key right in my vault. So I can hit next, and I'll just go ahead and uh, copy this. So you can click the time there, or if we just click into it, um, you'll see it counting down. You can hit copy, and then just paste the code in there and hit verify. And now it's set up for two-factor authentication, and obviously this is the backup code. Don't worry about trying to hack the Twitter account. I'm gonna change all this stuff by the time I post it. But um, that's how you will do TOTP in your uh, vault. So now I don't have to worry about an app on my phone or backing up my keys or having to have a hardware token for something that I don't really think I need a hardware token for, it is now saved in here. This feature alone, like I said, most people would pay the $10 a year just to have the TOTP in their um, vault. It really does make it quite convenient for a number of different services. Um, again, it's not for everything, but it works very well. So that's the one thing that I wanted to show you guys with, with the premium account. I did also say that there would be a nugget for you regardless if you use the premium account or the free account. Um, and that is if you go in and actually create like a username and password for something and you're using the password generator. So I do this all the time. I'm just gonna do this in the notepad because this might just be the easiest to kind of kind of see. Um, here, let me just minimize my screen here. Okay. So here I have a notepad and I think I have, I'll just use Chrome in the in the right here. And here's my, my password generator. So I'm gonna just kind of pop this out. Okay, so let's say I need to create a username and password for any new service, right? So username and I just put it in, you know, Tristan Bolton and then password. Oh, I need to create a unique one-time password. So I use the generator and most, most systems have this and you can kind of put in your special characters. You can drag the length to whatever you want and you copy the password and you paste it in. Um, that's all great. 
but I can't tell you how many times this has happened where um, now I'll go and click on something else or I copy something else and then all of a sudden it's lost on my clipboard and I didn't get a chance to save it in my vault. What I've learned is the best way to kind of actually create a username and password is to hit this plus button um, and then put your username and then password and then generate it here. Um, but honestly, I just find that as, it's just not my habit. That's a really great way. You save it in here and then you automatically populate it. Um, and that's just a habit thing. So if you if you haven't have a bad habit that you need to break, you should just hit the plus sign and add it in here to generate your password. What I do is I hit this generator at the bottom and then I copy it and I paste it in. Then for whatever reason, like 10 different reasons, you know, my clipboard gets overwritten or the vault didn't quite capture that username and password. And now I don't know what my username and password is. So the nugget is if you look back on your generator, there's a password history. And I can't tell you how many times this has saved me. So right now it's showing me a new password, uh, starting with Echo 9 Alpha. And if I look at my password history, it's gonna show me that it just generated the Echo 9 Alpha now. And this WRV one is one that I created when I showed you guys how to, how to uh, create um, using that plus sign. But this PJB one, this is the one that I actually created earlier. So uh, just because of my demo, you see kind of them stacked up, but you can see the timeline here as to when I created them. So I can see the history and now I can go copy and actually create the card. So I can't, I truly can't tell you how many times the password history has saved me. Some people would think that this is insecure and that's totally fine. You know, the password history does clear out over time. If you want to clear it right away, you can hit the clear button and it won't remember it. But sometimes just having it in there for another five minutes uh, or 10 minutes or whatever it is, however long it takes to clear out, you know, it could take um, some time depending on how often you're generating passwords. Uh, I'm not exactly sure how long it remembers it for, but every time I've wanted it, it's always been there and it saved me from having to either do a forgot password or totally get locked out because I didn't do it. So that is included in the free account or the premium account. You don't have to pay for this password history feature in the generator, um, but all those other features you do have to pay for. So the, the reporting, the one, the the uh, TOTP generator, right, having that in your vault, and uh, all those other features that we talked about, like the emergency access and stuff. So um, that's it. That's what I wanted to show you guys today. Okay guys, so hopefully you found that helpful. Um, if you did, if you learned anything new here, please smash that thumbs up or better yet, hit that subscribe. That would mean a lot to me. Um, if you have any questions or want any clarity about anything that I said today, uh, definitely put that in the comments below. I try to watch those pretty regularly or you can always hit me up at Twitter, um, at Tristan Bolton. Thanks guys, have a great day.